Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Tim Fallon, Chief Executive Officer of PBS 39. Tim has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Tim, for joining us today. Yeah, my absolute pleasure. So let's talk about PBS 39. You have a, also a very broad career uh, with a lot of experience elsewhere. Uh, talk about how you have seen this organization change over the last 20, 30 years. I've had the really good fortune to be involved uh, with PBS 39 since, uh, I think it was about 1995, uh, when my wife and I were fortunate enough to be the honorary co-chairs of the auction that uh, at the time, WLVT, uh, had run for 20 some odd years. And the company that we were involved with uh, had the good fortune to be the uh, opening night sponsor uh, for about 19 of those years. Subsequent to that, uh, I joined the board of directors and I was on the board uh, through 2009. I was actually the chair of the board in the early 2000s when the ideas around the Steel Stacks campus came to fruition. And so I was involved as a volunteer uh, representing PBS 39 in those discussions. And what we see now as the Steel Stacks campus is an outgrowth of the work that we did in the early 2000s. So let's talk a little bit about Steel Stacks so sure. that we can, and the campus itself. Mm -hmm. that, that itself is a fascinating story. Sure, so uh, the history there is uh, credit where credit is due, it needs to go to Jeff Parks, who was the CEO of ArtsQuest, and, uh, and which is the uh, parent organization of MusicFest. And so Jeff pulled together a group of volunteers to, uh, to go blue sky thinking. And we filled whiteboard after whiteboard at Northampton Community College with grandiose ideas of if we had unlimited resources and we could put this anywhere, what would an arts, entertainment, and culture district look like here in the Lehigh Valley? And in particular in this area at that time, we had a lot of buildings, a lot of facilities that were uninhabited, warehouses, factories, and so on, grounds, that were just uh, sitting there un underutilized. Absolutely. The uh, Bethlehem Steel plant here in Bethlehem had closed in 1995. Uh, and so we had the opportunity to go to Germany to see what they had done in the Ruhr Valley uh, and brought those ideas back here to Bethlehem. Uh, and we were able to work with the then owner of this particular site to create the idea of the Steel Stacks campus to have a creative adaptive reuse of this particular space. Uh, and I would argue 10 years in, uh, it has been a very effective reuse of that space and a catalyst for economic development here on the south side of Bethlehem. You, you've also done something quite extraordinary. You've taken a historical reality, this, this buildup of the steel industry here in this region, and then its demise. And you created out of that a cultural artifact, a uh, an, an identity. Um, you've created art. You've created this this sense of vitality, in which the the, the history that um, has um, provided jobs, but then also created real hardship, is contextualized in everyday life. You see these wonderful structures, these industrial structures, uh, standing silent. And they are, uh, they are, they're quite incredible. Um, and they're part and parcel of your DNA. Absolutely. The legacy of the history of B the South Bethlehem uh, and the steel company is one we're very proud of. It brought tremendous opportunity to a migrant uh, or immigrant population uh, and created good jobs for them for many generations. And it built America. It absolutely built America. The uh, skyscrapers of New York City, the Golden Gate Bridge, you name it, the Bethlehem Steel Corporation built it over time. And that is a legacy we're very proud of. But it also created the springboard for a future uh, that is equally, if not more, bright uh, than what we had before. And so as welcoming as this community was to a diverse population 100 and some odd years ago, I would argue it is equally, if not more, open uh, to that uh, diversity of population. And so as you walk through the south side of Bethlehem, you will see every ethnic uh, a minority, uh, and at some point they'll become a majority uh, in this area. And they have the opportunity to engage in the arts. 
in new jobs, in uh, cultural opportunities uh, that just are not found in many other places in America. And we've brought them here to South Bethlehem. And, and Bethlehem is another embodiment in this country of, of our nation's motto, e pluribus unum, yeah. out, of, out of many, one. Right. And, and you have here an identity, a cultural identity, an economy that is, that is really thriving. And, and, and the, if, if you look at the, the grounds today, you still have um, areas in this huge campus that require development. Mm -hmm. There are still huge warehouses, there are factory floors and so on that are still standing empty, preserved for future reuse. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, the actual steel plant in the background. And then you have a number of different buildings. Describe the, the buildings that are currently uh, occupied and filled with life as, as PBS 39 is and, and as some of your partner institutions are. Surely. So um, one of the major uh, areas that has uh, been reused, as it were, is where the uh, casino is. And that has created, I think it's 2,500 jobs uh, down here. Uh, PBS 39 and the ArtsQuest facility, uh, we actually built new facilities here on the grounds because we had technical uh, reasons to do that. Uh, the National Museum of Industrial History uh, has reused one of the uh, great buildings of the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. And just beyond that, uh, Factory, uh, which is a, a private incubator uh, accelerator company, has again uh, invested $10 million in just the infrastructure of creating a, a, a new place of business uh, to uh, in an old Bethlehem Steel building. So it is slow incremental progress. I think with the change of ownership uh, for the majority of the land here that is uh, underutilized, uh, I think both of the new ownership groups are very anxious to uh, get these new uh, get these old buildings uh, back to uh, back online as. Uh, uh, positive influences for the community. In terms of, of, of this organization, we're going to talk about the media side of PBS mm -hmm. 39. One of the things that has struck me is that in, the, in your facility, there are constantly meetings taking place which uh, sit at the intersection of what you do as a media organization and what the community requires. There are uh, reading, educational, uh, initiatives. There are initiatives that uh, are about the business community and, and coverage there. Uh, talk about the non-media piece about uh, of, of what PBS 39 is trying to accomplish here. Sure. So a number of years ago, uh, we created a strategic plan called WLVT 3.0. And that is looking at what we're going to be 20 years from now and how we can best serve the community. And while media has been our past and broadcast television is our legacy, being a media company is not all that we're going to do to help the community. And so you described uh, some of our educational uh, pro uh, projects, such as Lehigh Valley Reads, which is a very distinct effort to ensure that all children are reading at grade level by the end of third grade by 2025. Because if that occurs, their chances of success go up uh, exponentially. Whereas if a child is not reading at grade level, three quarters of them are going to end up either in prison or on welfare. And so that is something that we take very seriously. We're partnering with the United Way of the Greater Lehigh Valley uh, to ensure that by 2025 we have achieved that goal. In addition, we view this physical facility as here for the community. And therefore, we make this facility available to any nonprofit organization. If they want to have a meeting, if they want to uh, have a, a discussion here, we make it available either free of charge or at whatever the cost is for us to man that particular uh, event. And so whether it's the NAACP, which has their monthly meetings here, uh, to uh, the, the Boy Scouts or the United Way having staff meetings, um, or to us having community conversations right here in this studio where we'll have 150 people gathered to talk about something that is meaningful to them and to be able to talk to the leaders that can impact what that concern is. That's what we do. We convene the community right here. Uh, and quite honestly, when we have meetings like that, 
we light up the cameras. We want to share that as widely as we possibly can. That's the media role uh, that we have here to share that information to the community. It's, it's a interpretation, a very modern interpretation of what has traditionally been a media role. It's not only top down, it's also inside out, it's bottom up. It's, it's this whole idea that your role is to promote democracy. Absolutely. In this day and age, as independent journalism uh, becomes more and more, um, well, extinct, uh, and certainly smaller, and in, in, in communities such as ours, um, we, we've, we've seen that happen over the, the last few years. It's incumbent upon public media as a non-biased, objective, independent source of news and information uh, to do all that it can do to bring that information to the community and have that information come from the community. We all can get our national news from a, a number of different uh, uh, sources, but when we want to talk about what's happening in Bethlehem or in Nazareth or in Emmaus or in Coopersburg, we should have an independent source and that's what public media uh, brings to the equation. And so whether it's our nightly news program, PBS 39 News Tonight, which is on 6.30 every evening and at 11 o'clock, or our upcoming radio station, which is going to be the only independent NPR news and information station devoted to the Lehigh Valley that's news and information only. That is so important to ensure that democracy is preserved here in our local area. So you, you, you basically start off with this idea of serving the community, and then you shape your services around that idea rather than starting off with, well, this is what we have and this is what we do. Public media is here for the public. It's not here to create jobs in public media. Uh, if we were a pass-through for national programming, well, that would be fine. There's not an awful lot of value to the local community in that Plus, regard. local news doesn't get covered. Local issues do uh, not get covered. Absolutely. Even national issues don't get covered in a way that, that really affects people here. Right. right. So the, the, the true value of an entity such as what is now going to be called Lehigh Valley Public Media is that we listen to the community first and what it is that that community needs that we can bring our resources, uh, whether they're media resources, whether they're educational resources, whether they're the ability to convene the community, because in a, in a large construct, we're the Switzerland of nonprofit organizations. We do not have an agenda other than to make sure that our community is a better place to live tomorrow than it is today. A great asset to the community here in, uh, around Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, around uh, Lehigh Valley. Tim Fallon, thank you so much. Thank your staff, thank your board, thank your community for all of the work that you've done to advance civil society here in the Lehigh Valley, and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you. Thank you for putting this together. Appreciate it.